Hello, everybody, and welcome to this MIMHtraining.com web conference, Autism and Developmental Delay, with our speaker, uh, Dr. Sultan. Dr. Sultan is a board certified by the American Board of Pediatrics. He's board certified by the American Board of Environmental uh, Medicine. He's chairman of the American Board of Environmental Medicine. He's in been in private practice since 1975. He's a fellow of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics. And uh, he's with, he was with us last month um, for a talk called F Mental Health and Food Allergies. And if you didn't get to see that, I would uh, recommend that you uh, take some time to watch that after you watch this today. And actually, I'll include the link for that um, in the uh, email that I'll send you after the program today. So we'll have a link to the, the archive of this recording as well as the archive of the Mental Health and Food Allergies. Um, Dr. Tip, who's, uh, like I said, spoke with us before. Uh, today's topic is autism, and uh, just to segue a little bit, we're going to have a conference on autism, the Midwest Autism Conference, on October 12, 2017, here in St. Louis. And uh, if you want more information on that, you can go to MidwestAutismConference.com, and we would hope that you would join us for that. Um, so without further ado, Dr. Sultan, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to come and talk about uh, autism and developmental uh, delay. It's a tough subject as far as the you know, parents are concerned, and uh, that has been always challenging for me in my pediatric practice, but uh, I've been in environmental medicine for about 37 years, so which has always focused on treating the underlying causes. So in my today's seminar, I'll be talking about various causes of uh, autism and development delay, which you can treat and reverse the problems rather than just offering the symptomatic uh, treatment. And when I'm talking about uh, the uh, upstream medical care means treating the underlying causes, I'm not, uh, the information I'm, I'll be providing you in here is not just for development delay, but the same concepts apply to a lot of chronic illnesses that you may have. So this seminar is be, uh, will be uh, providing you information not just on uh, autism and development delay, but a lot of chronic ailments that uh, you may have in the, in the family. And I'm always intrigued by autism and is an uh, acronym, always unique, totally interesting, sometimes uh, mysterious. And what are the, why we uh, call them uh, always unique, totally interesting, sometimes mysterious? Because these children present with so many different varied uh, symptoms that it becomes difficult not to uh, include all those things in one place right in here so that you can see that uh, pick and choose how these uh, symptoms are manifesting uh, in your child or uh, your loved ones. It can be ADD, ODD, uh, uh, specific learning difficulties, ADHD, anxiety, uh, Tourette. Uh, th th these kids may be uh, gifted, have OCD, development delay, sensory integration disorders, auditory processing disorders, and uh, depression. And this is just uh, in a little more artistic way presenting what, we, what I just said. So I'm not going to go into all the symptoms of uh, autism and development delay because you guys all know about it. My focus in here is that how do you treat the underlying mechanisms of autism to bring reversal uh, to this difficult problem. So how do we do that? It's very simple, by finding the cause. But how do you fi find the cause? This is based on history, physical examination, and appropriate laboratory te testing to find the cause and uh, treat them. Let me give you a little preview in here, role of uh, environmental medicine as it looks at uh, chronic illnesses, uh, including uh, uh, autism. If you look on the top, this is what typically happens when you go to, uh, when you have a chronic problem like headaches, sinus, arthritis, colitis, whatever. You go to the physician, your prescribed medications like sinus medication, breathing medication, blood pressure medication, so on and so forth. Basically, what that is doing is they're just treating the underlying cause and doing nothing uh, uh, 
just they're just treating the symptoms and doing nothing underlying cause. So in environmental uh, medicine model says that you look for the underlying cause if you see that the underlying causes for a lot of chronic illnesses are not mysterious. Migraine uh, is not mysterious. Depression is not mysterious. Autism is not mysterious. It is you have to look for the underlying causes and here I have summarized some of the most common causes for chronic illness which could which be environmental like allergy, uh, nutritional, hormonal, uh, toxic. So when you pay attention to the, these things at this level, what you can do on this top, uh, top of level in here is that you can get rid of the patient's symptoms because you treat the cause, you're going to get rid of the symptoms. And when you get rid of the symptoms, obviously you get rid of the drug because you don't uh, need the drugs. And when you get rid, get rid of the drugs, you obviously don't need the physician. So the focus on treating the cause is to bring relief and reduce dependence on the, on the medical system. So what are the most common findings in autism? We see some patients have uh, uh, an environmental issues like inhalant allergies, uh, food allergies, chemical sensitivity, <coughs> gut uh, uh, microbiome uh, dysbiosis, uh, toxic maybe lead and mercury, hormonal problems like thyroid and uh, insulin resistance, or they may be uh, nutritional like B6, magnesium, uh, methylation issues which are treated with DMG and TMG, folic acid, uh, vitamin C deficiencies, zinc, copper, methyl B12, and low cholesterol. Now, uh, I, I, I will go over some of these uh, nutritional interventions which are rather uh, early interventions and most important interventions in kids uh, with uh, uh, developmental uh, delay in autism. And then I'm going to give you some case uh, presentations which will show you that how treating upstream for the underlying causes really has, the ma has really made the difference in their overall uh, health. So there are the most critical nu nutrients uh, to consider are vitamin B6, magnesium, DMG, that's dimethylglycine, folic acid, and vitamin C. So you guys uh, may ask, uh, ask me a question, oh, okay, fine, what, how much do we give to uh, our kid? Well, it depends on the uh, age of the child, but uh, really we have to determine the dose based on uh, individual basis. So I will give you just some guidelines in here because it, uh, it, it is going to vary from the uh, weight of the child and the age. Vitamin B6, usually we give them 8 milligram per pound, which could be, you know, like 500 uh, milligram uh, in a 60-pound you know, uh, kid. And we start with small amounts like quarter of the dose, what you uh, come up with, and build it up over uh, 10 to 14 days. If you do it uh, quickly, it may make a child uh, hyperactive or cause nausea or uh, diarrhea. And you should always give magnesium with B6, uh, B6 with uh, magnesium because magnesium is one of the very critical mineral deficient in these children. And the reason for that is very simple, that processing of our food destroys a lot of nutrients and especially it replaced magnesium. So most of us don't have adequate amount of uh, magnesium in our diet. And the dose is usually three to four milligram, up to a thousand milligram uh, for adults. The only caveat in here is that if you give too much magnesium, the kids are gonna get the diarrhea. So you just uh, cut down the dose. It's just pretty safe to use uh, magnesium in children. DMG, this is uh, one of the mechanisms that the, uh, these kids are low in methylation. So we give them a DMG or we can also give uh, TMG, trimethylglycine. Uh, the dose usually is like 125 milligram uh, tablet or capsule, uh, the, uh, somewhere between one half to uh, three uh, or four uh, tablets a day. And folic acid, the usually we give 250 microgram uh, per pound, but we can go up and down depending on how the ch uh, child uh, responds. And the best form of folic acid to use 
is folinic acid and uh, it is the active form of uh, you know, vitamin uh, B, B6. Vitamin C, then a study Leland uh, and his associates reported that uh, the adolescents uh, need about 8,000 milligram of vitamin C. Younger children uh, may need anywhere between uh, 1,000 to 5,000 uh, milligram. And again, vitamin C is very, very safe. If uh, you give too much vitamin C, the kids get the diarrhea, so you just uh, cut, cut it down. And um, So here I will give you the summary of intervention and then uh, in case studies I'll show you that how various, various causes we treated and how patient got better. I'm not going to read the whole, uh, whole thing right in here, but I'm just going to uh, leave it on, on for the display for a little bit that you can uh, later on uh, 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 re refer to. Okay, so now let's talk about some of these interventions we talked about and the causes we talked about, that in practical life, how this knowledge is applied. So this was a 14-year-old kid, Caucasian kid, who saw for the first time in September uh, 2016. He had come with a history of Asperger's, and uh, which started at the age of three or four. He, he had weight gain for five years when he was put on Abilify, and when he initially came in, this 14-year-old kid weighed 290 pounds. His additional symptoms consist of running nose, stuffy nose, for uh, three to four years. Uh, when we tested, we, treat, uh, we found that the patient had inhalant allergies, had problem with the yeast we're going to talk about uh, as we progress, low thyroid, magnesium deficiency, food allergy, and insulin resistance. So we'll see that by, uh, uh, by treating uh, these underlying causes, what was the overall outcome. Okay. Now, as I said, what I'm going to talk to you is not just uh, for autism only, but also it will apply to uh, uh, most of you if you have one of, some of these problems. We suspected this kid for inhalant allergies because of runny nose, stuffy nose, wheezing, tightens the chest, hay fever, uh, spring through fall. So inhalant means dust, moles, pollens. So if you have problem with the runny nose, stuffy nose, coughing, wheezing, difficulty in breathing, etc., one of the things you should look, uh, look for as a potential cause is dust and mold allergy. So when we tested, we found he was allergic to dust, moles, and pollens. And when he came to us, he was taking Claritin and Albutrol inhaler for the bronchial uh, symptoms. And uh, we started him on a dust and mold injection in October 2016. And then he had symptoms suggestive of uh, C4, that small intestinal fungal overgrowth. That is the uh, imbalance uh, between gut flora. And this is one of the common causes uh, for a lot of chronic illness, which especially involve the digestive and uh, cerebral uh, symptoms. What it is is that because of uh, inappropriate diet, high in carbon and sugar, uh, use of antibiotics, birth control pills, steroids. The gut flora gets imbalanced. Good bacteria uh, are eliminated. Bad bacteria take over along with uh, fungi and moles. And when that happens, it manifests in the form of uh, manifesting in two parts of the body. Number one, the digestive area, and uh, number two, uh, the uh, brain. Uh, if you want to get more information, you can search uh, on the uh, internet uh, uh, about uh, gut-brain connection, and you will come up with a lot of uh, information on that. So why we suggested this patient had bowel uh, the uh, flora imbalance? Because of constipation, gas, belching, bloating, coated tongue, that's usually come from the yeast, nausea, indigestion, and then he had cerebral symptoms of headache, anxiety, difficulty setting, reaching goals, mental fatigue, poor comprehension, hyperactivity. And he had taken a lot of uh, antibiotics, so that would make sense that uh, he could have uh, uh, a problem with the gut flora imbalance. So we, treatment was very simple. We gave him nystatin, this is an antifungal medication. And as uh, you're uh, uh, watching me, 
think about yourself if you have chronic problems, if you have digestive issues and uh, cerebral issues, uh, you should uh, seriously consider the possibility of a bowel imbalance, uh, bowel flora imbalance. Then we did testing and found out that he was allergic to, uh, he was uh, deficient in magnesium. What are the symptoms of magnesium deficiency? In this kid, it was muscle aches, muscle cramping, joint pains, low back pain, uh, constipation, and then brain symptoms, depression, anxiety, irritability, poor concentration, sleep disturbances. See, one of the things to realize is that magnesium is nature's tranquilizer. So um, besides muscle ache, joint pains, leg cramping, stuff like that, if you have a problem with insomnia and uh, depression, anxiety, irritability, think of uh, magnesium deficiency in these children or, uh, uh, or uh, in, in your case, you see. So the best test to find out magnesium deficiency is magnesium load test, uh, in which we uh, 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 give a calculated dose of magnesium and then see how much magnesium was retained. So the kid re retained 84% and normally is up to 10%, so it was severe magnesium deficiency. Along with that, we checked his vitamin D level, which was only 35.5, and typically we like to see over uh, 60. Okay, then we uh, uh, another thing we looked for, uh, in this. You see, uh, there, there's one uh, very important caveat to learn from here. When you are talking about you know, kids with development delay or autism, you cannot just focus on the uh, mental symptomatology. You have to look at the uh, whole body head to toe what are the symptoms are. Because if you focus just on the one body organ, then the only thing you're left with is giving them symptomatic uh, uh, treatment and uh, not uh, looking for the underlying cause. So in, uh, in cerebral symptoms, low thyroid is one of the most important uh, cause that is often missed. And uh, the patients are uh, conveniently priced, uh, prescribed uh, various nerve medication. So what are the symptoms of low thyroid? In this case, fatigue, severe fatigue in the morning, tiredness by the end of the day, sleeping excessively, sleeping during the daytime, weight gain, and uh, had low body temperature. Lab tests uh, suggestive of hypothyroidism, so we treated for, with the thyroid, um, uh, natural thyroid, natural thyroid in October 2016. And then uh, patient had symptoms suggestive of food allergy in the form of uh, uh, tomatoes causing rash, apple causing throat itching, peaches causing throat itching, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not going to go to all those uh, because, uh, because of the time, but basically uh, what we did, we tested him on the feeding test, award the food, add the food, and see what happens. He had uh, two plus reaction to eggs. Uh, 2 plus 2 wheat, 2 plus 2 sugar, uh, 2 plus 2 <coughs> yeast, 3 plus 2 corn, and 3 plus 2 soybean, and uh, uh, 1 plus 2 milk. So another thing the kid had was insulin resistance. Insulin was very high. We'll go into more details a little bit uh, later. Um, insulin resistance uh, is basically uh, you remember what insulin is, if you eat too many carbs, your insulin goes up, uh, I'm sorry, your sugar goes up, pancreas put insulin to bring sugar down, it's too much insulin, sugar go, goes way down, this yo-yo over a period of time leads to a lot of serious problems. One of them is the, uh, obesity, when you get hungry, you eat more, so uh, you, uh, you, you gain weight, that's the obesity, and then insulin damaging vascular system, so it can ca cause you coronary artery disease, hypertension, uh, stroke and eventually adult onset diabetes. So, uh, so the uh, things to remember is CHAOS, C H A O S is the acronym. So, if you or any uh, loved ones has problem with weight gain, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, uh, I mean stroke, coronary artery disease, you got to seriously look into insulin resistance, which is very very simple. All you have to do is uh, check your fasting glucose and uh, insulin levels. Okay, now, okay, fine, these are the interventions we did, but what was the outcome? We saw the patient on September 2016 in November, 
uh, he uh, reported digestive symptoms are a lot better, constipation and diarrhea, gas, belch, you know, bloating are bad, better. In November 2016, uh, we treated him uh, with magnesium and he reported overall improvement as 25% better. In January 2017, he rated overall 50% better. His, beha uh, his behavioral symptoms improved 50%. Uh, in January 2017, uh, there was improvement in his uh, energy level because we were already taking thyroid. He was able to get off uh, three medications, Vyvanse, Buspar, and uh, uh, Lemetrogene. And uh, since being off those medications, he did not have that uh, drug uh, feeling as before, and he had a lot more uh, energy. In March 2017, uh, his, he reported uh, his energy is a lot better and overall improvement is 50% better with significant improvement in his behavioral symptoms and he was sleeping uh, better. In April, uh, he reported improvement in his uh, respiratory symptoms because we're treating uh, for inhalant allergies. So now you can, you, can, you can see that by treating underlying cause, the same kid who's on medication uh, got so much weight, 290 pounds, he is off most of the medications and uh, feeling, feeling better. So again, uh, where to start the intervention? These are some of the uh, areas. I'm just gonna leave this slide for a little bit. I'm gonna go to, I won't read through all that because of the uh, time constraint. Now here, here's the practical aspect of uh, really what you can do with uh, dietary interventions and I'll, I'll give you a lot more uh, details in here. The first step in that is clean up the diet and get off junk food. What is meant by clean up the diet and get off junk food? Here is one question I'm gonna ask you. How do you feed your kids right? Well, you may have some idea, but I'll give you a short answer. Feed your children what will rot and do it before it does. Feed your kids what will rot and do it before it does. Means fresh meats, fruits, vegetables, grain, green beans, and stuff like that. And getting of junk food means avoid the sad diet. You know what sad diet is? The standard American diet full of additive, preservative, coloring dyes, canned meats, canned fruits, canned uh, vegetables. So, so the first thing is clean up the diet. So what kind of food you should give, give the kids? I'll just give you a general category right now uh, to build up like, like a pyramid. And as I'm going up, uh, up the uh, ladder, I will show you what other things uh, to eliminate. So the starting point is fresh meats, fruits, vegetables, grain, green, and beans. Okay, now, and there are some other issues in there too. And so, uh, some, um, some of these kids are allergic to uh, common food they eat, like for example, uh, sugar. And if you say 47% better, uh, what, it, what it means is that the study showed that when we did these dietary interventions, what percentage of parents reported improvement in their child? Not that child got 47% better, but this intervention was, uh, has a positive influence in 47% of the cases, you see. Off chocolate, uh, kid got, uh, uh, kids got 95% better. This is the, the interventions I'm uh, giving you. I, I cannot give you all the details for such a short time, but this is a book I will recommend you can buy, buy on Amazon.com, Effective Biomedical Interventions by Sidney Baker, MD, and it has a lot of more details than I can uh, present you right in here. Okay, so what are the first dietary interventions besides getting off the junk food? Consume diet rich in protein, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, beans, non-gluten, whole grains, which include rice, buckwheat, corn, millet, quinoa, and amaranth. And get off milk and milk products for three weeks. Try this as first before trying gluten-free diet. And avoid all forms of milk, including goat milk, butter, whey, uh, cheese, yogurt, lactose, casein, uh, casein. And 
49% uh, reported improvement with this uh, intervention. So it's almost 50% of gluten for two weeks after being on digestive enzymes. So once you've been off the milk, uh, milk products, a lot of these children have problem uh, with, the, with their digestive uh, uh, tract, especially with uh, deficiency in digestive enzymes. So you put them on uh, digestive enzymes and uh, then uh, after two weeks, start on gluten to see what the overall impact is. And what are the gluten containing grains? They are wheat, rye, barley, oat, semolina, <coughs> spelt, trilicate, kamut. And here, 47% reported improvement. Now, with the combination of gluten and casein free, 63% reported uh, improvement. Quite an impressive improvement with just this little intervention, no drugs involved, you see. Of soybean and soybean products, including tofu, it produces peptides similar to casein and gluten. That's how the, uh, it, it works, that these peptides act like a, a morphine like uh, substances suppressing the brain function. And of yeast, 52% uh, uh, got, got better. Now I will give you a summary of uh, various interventions to sh so you can see which ones were really effective in bringing the improvement. The, on the top is the detox or uh, chelation with 73% reported improvement. What is chelation? It consists of some people have inherited tendency to accumulate heavy metals. We are all uh, exposed to heavy metals, lead, cadmium, mercury, and uh, so on and so forth. But most of us uh, uh, get rid of uh, in the urine but some uh, or the stool, uh, but some people cannot. So that accumulates, especially in these kids. And uh, lead and mercury are two very important uh, toxic uh, metals uh, for the brain. So with that uh, detox uh, chelation, 73% got better, gluten-free, 63%, food allergy treatment, 59%, melatonin, 58%, digestive enzymes, 52%. And similarly, Kenda diet, which we talked about the uh, uh, gut flora C4 diet, uh, giving them fatty acids, essential fats, omega-3 and omega-6, 50% uh, improvement, eliminating chocolate, 49% improvement, milk, 49%, uh, uh, vitamin, giving vitamin B6, 47%, eliminating, so I, I'm not going to go re read all that stuff, but the, the slide is there for you to review. But you see that all these interventions, there is no mention of drugs and see how much, uh, uh, how, these, how much uh, these interventions, how much improvement they've been able to br uh, bring about. So I put, put out in here 11 most uh, common non-toxic interventions which, um, uh, which brought the improvement, okay. Now, next thing is after you have done the changes in, in the in diet like we talked about, the next thing comes out to sort out food allergy. How do you sort out food allergy? Uh, we have a specific uh, diet in which we avoid common foods, milk, egg, wheat, corn, sugar, yeast, uh, soybean, additive, preserved, preserved recalling dyes, canned meats, canned fruits, canned vegetables. Then following a protocol, you introduce, uh, after being on, on the elimination for 14 days, you add the food as directed one by one to see which food causes a symptom. And this is one of the first case I presented. That was, that was the thing we did. After elimination diet, we add the foods and uh, the kid reacted uh, was two plus, three plus uh, uh, reaction to most, most of those uh, foods. Okay. Then you will see in the uh, literature, uh, there are a trial of uh, casein, uh, casein free diet and uh, gluten free diet and uh, uh, we, we just talked about, uh, about that already. And then you will see uh, in the literature talking about anti-hypoglycemia diet or which is the ketogenic diet which basically consists of low carb and uh, high fat diet uh, which, uh, which has helped. Uh, I go, you can try that, but basically what I do is 
in environmental allergy, there's one thing uh, to, to focus on. And when we talk about the causes, we are really, really talking about demonstrable causes, not uh, just, uh, I think, the way the mother raised the kids or the, uh, the way uh, the psychological stress, now, et cetera, et cetera. We're not talking about those. We're talking about. So the first things I presented, there was demonstrable food allergy. There was demonstrable inherent allergy. There was demonstrable uh, low thyroid as a cause, so on, so on and so forth. So I'm not very much uh, in favor of these kind of uh, diets. I look at what you're sensitive to, and then uh, I advise accordingly. But anyway, th this in the literature I'm just uh, reporting to you. Uh, same way, a uh, specific carbohydrate diet and uh, prior of uh, low oxalate diet. I think uh, probably the least uh, effective of those is the low oxalate diet. Okay. Now, environmental causes. And uh, I've, I've gone through uh, this uh, in, in my uh, already seminar that if uh, you have uh, prominent running nose, stuffy nose, congested nose, uh, wheezing, you should uh, think about uh, uh, inhalant allergies. And I'm going to uh, just uh, skip that part. And when do you suspect uh, uh, gut flora imbalance problems? If you have just a lot of antibodies, birth control pills, sugar high in uh, carbohydrates. And uh, then you share brain and cerebral symptoms. Uh, you uh, look, into, uh, look into the uh, yeast and gut flora imbalance. And these are the basic uh, blood workup uh, we recommend uh, to do is blood count, iron, blood chemistries, uh, lipid panel. Again, I'm going to read the whole that. I just uh, leave it there for, for a minute uh, uh, for you uh, to, uh, to look at that. OK, now I'm going to give you case study number two. This was a two and a half years old male we saw for the first time in uh, August uh, 2015. The chief complaint was mostly living in his own world and hardly responding to name, poor attention span, uh, flapping of hands, running nose, and itching of skin since the age of uh, 18 months. Other symptoms included recurrent ear infections, time five to six. Symptoms suggestive of uh, small gut flora imbalance was unformed stools, diaper rashes associated with antibiotics, coated tongue, that's as I said, this is yeast, uh, poor comprehension, learning difficulties, and, uh, and had uh, taken a lot of antibiotics. And we suspect food allergies. Uh, and so avoiding gluten and casein, patient, parents noted uh, some improvement in his hand flapping and uh, temper tantrums. And then symptoms suggest a digest, uh, digestive enzyme deficiency included that since birth, he always had a loose stool, never a formed stool. And symptoms suggestive of low thyroid, he had development delay and his high cholesterol and uh, high LDL and his uh, 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 TSH uh, later on, uh, you know, when we did the uh, TSH came out to be high, which is a marker for uh, low low thyroid. Okay, for so how do, how we treat it? These are the intervention for the gut flora. We gave him diflucan. For low thyroid, we gave him uh, thyroid. He had iron deficiency, so we uh, gave him uh, iron. And. Um, uh, these kids, as a surgeon, you know, we talk about B6 and magnesium and all the uh, nutrients. So as a, as a convenience in these small children, you can get this uh, focused um, uh, multivitamin and minerals. There are two preparations that I use. One of them is a ASD Plex. You can uh, in uh, search on the internet. And uh, also Supernutera. But here we gave, we gave, uh, uh, gave the kid ASD Plex and uh, uh, some vitamin C and vitamin E. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, th this ha already has uh, adequate amount of vitamin C and vitamin E and uh, B6, calcium, so on and so forth. And we also gave him uh, injection methyl B12 because no, a lot of times there's an issue uh, with the met methylation and gave him uh, TMG with, uh, uh, with folic acid and B12. And the dietary intervention, uh, just like we talked about, got off junk food and uh, uh, common foods. Uh, and when we did the feeding test, it revealed three plus reaction to uh, sugar, soybean, wheat, and uh, coloring dyes. We gave him, uh, because of diarrhea and gut flora imbalance, we gave uh, 
uh, probiotic, the HLC uh, intensive, 24 billion units. And now what's, what's the outcome with these uh, simple few interventions? October 10, uh, mother reported uh, uh, that, uh, that he started speaking uh, single words, sometimes two words, uh, sentences, and uh, started uh, imita uh, imitating better uh, uh, com uh, comprehension. Mother uh, stated that improvement was 25 percent better. In November 2007, uh, mother reported the improvement in speech and uh, reported uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, he's showing improvement in uh, speech and uh, responding to questions and more social at daycare. November uh, 2015, mother reported improvement in speech and uh, reported that he is uh, uh, showing improvement in speech and uh, responding to questions and more uh, and is more social at daycare. In December 2015, mother reported that uh, he was putting uh, four to five words uh, together in answers. Uh, uh, in answers uh, and answer the questions and speech was improving and uh, even more energetic. In January 2016, mother reported that uh, he can speak simple sentences and getting better in answering questions and uh, uh, social uh, senses much better. Mother reported the improvement as 50% uh, better. March uh, 2016, mother reported that his speech has gotten much better and uh, rated the improvement 75 percent better. Again, no drugs, no nothing, just uh, simple. And this pro work is still in uh, progress. Okay. What are the triggers for autism? This is uh, just uh, uh, environmental triggers. Uh, I, I, I won't read through all that, you know, too fast, too unfamiliar, too loud, too unexpected, uh, too high, because these are all uh, 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 represent hyper excitability of the uh, of the brain in, in these autistic kids. If you uh, do the neurotransmitter testing, you will often find that uh, most of the neurotransmitters, both the you know, stimulatory and as well as inhibitory neurotransmitters are very high, showing the hyper excitability of the uh, brain. And this is just uh, in a picture form. Okay. What else can we do uh, for, the, uh, for these kids. Well, there are three basic principles. No matter what problems you have, if you do these three things, most people are going to be all right, you see. The one is clean air, clean food, and clean water. So we talked about uh, clean food a lot in uh, detail. Clean water just means uh, uh, filter water. So it comes down to the air, the clean air, that's, that's where uh, we, uh, we need to uh, focus a little bit. We need to provide these kids a uh, clean environment. Number one uh, part of that clean environment is that no sh nobody should be smoking at home uh, because uh, smoking is uh, associated with uh, a lot of uh, childhood, uh, childhood uh, morbidity and mortality. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, the, when people smoke in the house, uh, Half of the illness can be associated, uh, respiratory illness and other illness can be associated with, uh, with, uh, with smoking. So, and number two is the common chemicals that we use uh, in our day-to-day -day, uh, environment. One of them, the most critical one is gas stove because when you have a gas stove in the house, the amount of chemical pollution produced is three to four hundred percent more than the worst smog that we talked in LA, California. So that need to be uh, taken care. And also Lysol, pine salt, uh, cleaning products, they should be removed uh, and uh, use uh, green uh, cleaning pr products. Just remember one golden principle. Do not breathe what you cannot eat. Problem with these uh, uh, kids is that they cannot express if the chemical or, or are bothering them or not. So and that's by uh, default, as we talked about clean air, clean food, and clean water, we should provide them uh, with the you know, clean air, no Lysol, pine salt, and, and stuff. And as I said, do not breathe what you cannot eat. What happens if you drink Lysol, pine salt, and gasoline? You become sick. So similarly, uh, uh, you should not be 
uh, breathing them either. Uh, and so uh, Lysol, Pinesol, and uh, so many other uh, cleaning products, you can go to a health food store and find a lot of good uh, uh, green uh, cleaning uh, pr products. That's a subject by self own. Uh, I don't have the time to go into all that. Okay. Now, this is a five years old uh, female we saw for the first time in May 2015 and with the chief complaints of uh, developmental delay, start at the age of two, symptoms are consisting of uh, uh, getting emotional, easy, uh, easily anxiety, uh, social separation, uh, frustrated easily, poor speech, anger, awkward behavior, uh, uh, and hard to uh, fall asleep. There's a little typo there, okay. Interventions, I'm going to go to just, just a summary. We gave diflucan for the candor, uh, uh, treatment of yeast. <coughs> Blood count and RN, uh, uh, ferritin tests show that <coughs> she had <coughs> anemia. Her hemoglobin was 9.9, .9, I would like to see at least 12. And ferritin was 5, can go more than uh, below that, that goes get to 0, so we gave iron. Intervention uh, with the nutrients was ASD plus one scoop uh, daily with melatonin at night and two hours before sleep for insomnia. And we gave B12 injection, got off a junk food, and uh, 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 get, got off soybean and milk, milk products. Elimination diet showed 3 plus reaction to uh, sugar, causing hyperactivity, 3 plus to wheat, causing spaciness. Two and a half months later, the mother reported and that uh, she is more playful, anxiety is better, eating habits are better, uh, physical appearance has improved, dark, dark circles under the eyes have gotten better, and uh, flexibility and uh, mood is uh, better, and uh, eye contact is better. Uh, she gets uh, excited when uh, she expresses her feelings and uh, wants to uh, play with other, other kids. Two and a half months later, uh, my assessment included that she was quite social and quite uh, communicating and interacting and was uh, responding appropriately to the, to the question. Six months later, mother uh, uh, discontinued uh, diflucan, that's for the, the, for the yeast, and the child's uh, regressed, so we started back uh, again. And uh, nine months later, mother reported 75% nine, uh, nine, uh, 75, uh, 75 improvement, and that her uh, speech, anxiety, social interaction, and eczema had improved a lot. Then, uh, so we had, uh, so, so these are the uh, case, uh, case studies. Now I'm gonna go over some other areas. Just like we are talking about vitamins and minerals, similarly, there are certain fats that are not provided in our diet and body can make them. So we call them essential fatty acids. And uh, the source for this, and there are two, kind, two groups of uh, essential fatty acids. One is omega-3 and omega-6. These kids can benefit for both omega-3 and omega-6, more, more with omega-3, uh, which uh, are fish oil, uh, like any fish oil or cod liver oil, or uh, flaxseed, flax, uh, uh, flaxseed oil. And omega-6 uh, come from primrose oil, uh, primrose oil uh, borage oil, or black uh, currant oil, but uh, a small kid, you know, a uh, quarter to uh, half a teaspoon. Okay, so after bringing all these concepts of uh, uh, environment, nutrition, inhalant allergies, endocrine problems, thyroid, uh, uh, insulin resistance, etc., what is the take home points? Number one, ASD is not a single disorder, but a bunch of disorders. It should uh, be thought of as a neuroimmune disorder presenting as a unique. Uh, multi-organ disorder, uh, which is quite uh, different in each individual. As you see, the three uh, cases, although there was things common, but uh, there are a lot of things that are not common. Uh, though unique, but most cases share the similar causes. Treatment must be individualized. And demonstra as we talked about before, demonstrable causes must be sought in order to bring best relief and upstream medical care, which means treating the cause, provides the best chance for recovery in AST. 
So this is the final message I want you to go home. When all is said and done, you are responsible for your own sufferings. You are the director of the show. My goal was to present you with options in treatment, both uh, downstream and upstream. Uh, you all are familiar with downstream, all the medication and stuff like that, so I didn't want to spend time on that. So I presented you and brought awareness that many of these kids, when treated upstream, can, in fact, get a lot uh, better. So with that, I open uh, you uh, 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 any questions you, uh, you guys may have. And another thing is, since I, as, as I was going through the uh, causes, I give you a little... Uh, questionnaire down in here you can uh, see, see at your own and see what your issues and problems you have and you should not uh, get settled with symptomatic treatment but uh, you should try to seek the underlying cause a physician who is uh, familiar with the upstream medical care and treats the causes instead of treating the symptoms so here is the, uh, uh, the upstream medical care screen for the cause of your chronic illness uh, again, uh, list three most bothersome symptoms here so that you can focus on what your issues and problems are. Then here is the history, digestive, neuro symptoms, energy, skin. I'm not going to read that. This is all you can uh, get it uh, uh, from the uh, presentation. Uh, nose, lungs for uh, women uh, issues. These are the some of the clue symptoms that will tells you if you have problem with food allergy. Typically, uh, the food allergy is 100% uh, hidden. Uh, I mean, there are two types of food allergy. One is easy to recognize. When you eat strawberries, you wake up hives, you eat fish, your face swell up. You do not need to go to the doctor to make the diagnosis, you know it yourself. So that's not what we're concerned. What we are concerned is called the hidden or subtle form of allergy, where eating the food doesn't come to any problem. So when it is 100% hidden, you have absolutely no clue. You may have migraine headaches, you may have arthritis, you may have colitis, you may have asthma, but uh, no food, you know that bothers you. But if it is not 100% hidden, then you may have some clues like uh, do food bother you, uh, 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 do you crave certain foods, after meals you get any symptoms, so on and so forth. And, and then also you know, family history, uh, do you have any family high blood pressure, heart disease, you know, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, etc., etc., diabetes? Because this was, I, because uh, insulin resistance is a very common cause uh, for a lot of chronic illnesses. So I just put them, uh, some of those manifestations right in here. If you have family history, you've got from weight gain or any of these problems, then you should seriously look into insulin resistance. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, click the link below the uh, picture window and you can ask a question to the doctor. Um, sorry, I was dealing with some other things here, doctor, so I was <laughs> doing some other things so we'd, I don't have uh, things up on the screen as we would normally. But uh, a couple of questions for you just that I was thinking about as you were talking was, so you talked about um, folks who were were younger uh, there at the end. I think the third example was like a five-year-old mm -hmm. or something like that, and uh, with kind of more severe cases. So what if somebody is like a higher-functioning uh, person wh who's diagnosed with autism and has um, uh, and is older, so, you know, in their <coughs> 20s or something? I know the first, first example was in the 20s, mm -hmm. but uh, would a lot of the, the same uh, things help those folks? Very good, very good question. Uh, first of all, see, I gave you the older kid, you know, 14 years old kid with those, uh, with those things. One thing to know is, you see, the, the brain of a child is a developing brain. And any insult during that nutrition deficiencies, or allergies, and etc., what damage it causes, you may not be able to reverse it uh, completely. So that's one point to think. And number two is, that is never too late. You, even if they're adults and they're high functioning, uh, that Asperger case that I gave, that was the high functioning uh, kid. So it is never too late. Look into and see. You may not be able to reverse 100%, but if uh, some of the major symptoms can be relieved, because as, as I said, these uh, 
kids are uh, older uh, uh, adults do not just purely have neurological symptom. They have so many other uh, issues with that. They may have digestive problems, constipation, diarrhea, gas, dulcing, bloating, and digestion. They may, they may have uh, fatigue, tiredness. They may have musculoskeletal symptoms, and so on and so forth. So you have to look at the patient as a whole and see what could be the underlying cause and treat them and bring as much relief as you can uh, possible. So uh, it is never too late to look into the underlying causes. Okay, as we, uh, as we wait for some other questions to come in, I just want to remind everybody that uh, the Midwest Autism Conference is coming up October 12th. That's uh, Thursday here in St. Louis, Missouri. You can get more information at midwestautismconference.com. Um, and we would uh, hope that you might be able to join us for that. Um, is there, if, is there, um, I suppose, I'm trying to think if, uh, of the words here, if, is there anything like a, pearls of wisdom that you would uh, say for this? So like if you're uh, a person who is uh, helping someone with a diagnosis, is there something that you, you should do first, like this is the easiest thing to do, you should do this first <coughs> before anything else. Very, very, very good, very good question. Two most important things that if you <coughs> cannot do anything, nothing, uh, two most important things you can do is, number one is uh, try casein, uh, casein uh, 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 and gluten-free diet, T -t -try, try with that, and give uh, them uh, magnesium and B6. That's it, and see where, where it takes. Obviously, uh, as uh, with all the cases I presented, this is a complex problem. It's not just a quick fix, but these are the starting things, and go through my uh, seminar and uh, re read all the interventions I've given you, which are so simple. See which one you're able to do it, and then when you accomplish that, because that, that depends on you. So when you accomplish that, then say, can I, can I add this, can I add that? Can I add DMG? Can I add uh, 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 vitamin C? So on and so forth. So you can uh, gradually uh, 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 go into uh, uh, depending on your own pace. Okay, I'm just checking to see if we have anything here. So if, um, so the B6, you said magnesium and, and the gluten-free diet, so is, I'm trying to think here, if, if so you think that the gluten-free diet is going to, um, to help in all cases, or is that just a, a, a narrow uh, focus for people? Well, is it? well this, this is a narrow focus, okay. because other practices and mental allergy, we can specifically test for food, you know? So these kind of uh, uh, dietary interventions have come, uh, uh, keeping in mind uh, uh, nay people uh, do, uh, do, uh, do, uh, doing the job. So uh, uh, teaching them intricacies of uh, how to food allergy testing, all this stuff is done, says so eliminate and see what happens. You, you get better, that's good. You uh, keep moving onwards. So it is the lowest level of intervention when it comes down to food allergy. The higher level is you learn how to do the feeding test, eliminate, challenge food, see what food causes symptoms, and then now you have demonstrated causes. That's why it's in all those cases I've shown you the demonstrable uh, causes or de demonstrated causes in those patients, those we treated. Okay. And I want to thank everybody uh, uh, for joining us. Just to, so you know, after the uh, web conference is over, uh, we will send out an email that will have a link to the archive as well as the archive from last uh, web conference, which was mental health and food allergies from Dr. Sultan, uh, as well as a link to do uh, an evaluation uh, of the program. So if you want to fill that out uh, when you get that email, probably later today or tomorrow, we would appreciate it. A any kind of, any closing thoughts for us today on, on hmm. our topic, uh, Doctor? Interesting. Closing thoughts basically is when you, fir first of all, do not take downstream medical care, means symptomatic treatment, as the ultimate in medical care. That's the biggest mistake uh, one can make. Instead, always question your mind, 
why my child is having this problem, my child is having headache, why my child is ha having developmental issues, my, why my uh, child has uh, uh, communicative problems, et cetera, et cetera. So think upstream, and most of the time, you'll be rewarded. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate you being here with us. And like I said, look for that email with the archive of the videos from uh, the Food Allergies talk as well as this talk. And uh, we'll see you next time, everybody. Have a good okay, day. Thank you very much.